An asymptote is a line that a function's graph nears toward the edges of the coordinate plane. Let's look at this function, f of x equals negative 2x squared over the quantity x minus 1 squared, and identify where its asymptotes are. First of all, if we look down at the bottom edge, we might notice that there's a vertical line that the function seems to be getting close to. That vertical line is the line x equals 1, and it's a vertical asymptote for the function. If we look at the left and right edges of the graph, we can see that there's a horizontal line that the function seems to be getting close to. That line is y equals negative 2, and it's a horizontal asymptote for the function. But what if we don't have the graph of the function? How can we find those vertical and horizontal asymptotes? Well, let's start with the vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur where the denominator of the simplified fraction is 0. The equation of our vertical asymptotes will be x equals a number, where the number is the number that makes the denominator of the simplified fraction equal to 0. And vertical asymptotes will never be crossed or touched. So let's look at this function, f of x equals x squared minus x minus 6 over x squared minus 4x plus 3. And let's see if we can find any vertical asymptotes. The first thing we'll do is factor the numerator and denominator of the fraction. Our goal here is to simplify the fraction if we can. And we do see that there's a common factor of x minus 3 in the numerator and denominator. So that means we can simplify this fraction to x plus 2 over x minus 1. Vertical asymptotes occur where that denominator of the simplified fraction is equal to 0. So we have to ask ourselves, when is x minus 1 equal to 0? Well, that's when x equals 1. So our vertical asymptote is the line x equals 1. Here's what the graph of the function looks like. And sure enough, if we look at the line x equals 1, we can see that that line is a vertical asymptote for the function. Now you may be wondering about the x minus 3, because 3 does make the denominator of the original fraction equal to 0. But since we could remove that factor from the fraction by simplifying, that tells us that the x minus 3 is not going to give us a vertical asymptote. However, 3 does make the denominator of the original fraction equal to 0. And what that tells us is that there's a hole in the graph where x is equal to 3. Now let's think about horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes will occur when the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal. In other words, when the highest exponent in the numerator and denominator are the same. To find the equation of that horizontal asymptote, we'll need to find the leading coefficient of the numerator and denominator. And then the equation of our horizontal asymptote will be y equals that fraction that we find by dividing the numerator's leading coefficient by the denominator's leading coefficient. Finally, horizontal asymptotes might be crossed near the center of the graph. They don't have to be crossed, but they could be. We just found the vertical asymptote for this function. Now let's find its horizontal asymptote. What we notice is that the highest degree in the numerator and denominator is the same. In the numerator, we have a highest degree term of x squared, and in the denominator, we also have a highest degree term of x squared. What's important here is to find the leading coefficients of those highest degree terms, and they're understood in this case to both be 1's. Then we have to think about making a fraction out of those leading coefficients. So 1 over 1 is 1, and that means the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 1. Here's the graph of our function again, and here's that horizontal asymptote drawn on it, the line y equals 1. Now let's look back at the very first function that we started with, and let's see if we can find its horizontal asymptote. We're going to have to do a little bit of work to find the leading coefficient in the denominator, because we have to go ahead and square the x minus 1. Now we can see that the leading coefficient in the numerator is negative 2, and the leading coefficient in the denominator is 1, which is coming from our 1x squared. 
So negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2, which gives us a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 2. Here was the graph of our function, and here's the line y equals negative 2, which we can see is our horizontal asymptote. There's one more type of asymptote we haven't talked about yet, and that's slant asymptotes. Here's a graph with a slant asymptote, and this is what it looks like. You can see that it's still a line that our function's getting close to as we get out on the edges of our graph, but it's not a horizontal line and it's not a vertical line. Slant asymptotes will happen only when the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator, and that's what we see in this function. The degree of the numerator is 2, that's coming from our x squared, and the degree of our denominator is 1, which is coming from our x to the first power. To find the equation of a slant asymptote, we're going to have to use long division. So let's go ahead and do that x squared plus 2 over x minus 1 is x squared plus 2 divided by x minus 1. And if we use long division to get a quotient and a remainder, we can rewrite our original fraction as x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. As we get further out toward the edges of our graph, the x is getting very, very large, which means that fraction 1 over x minus 1 is becoming very, very small. And what we would have left as we get out on the edges of our graph is just the x plus 1. And that gives us the equation for our slant asymptote, which is y equals x plus 1.